All right. So I have a question for you. And uh, if you want to answer, you can. But uh, if there was a phrase that you could ban from modern society, what would it be? Anybody? Transparency. Okay. What? <laughs> okay. Well, for me, let's let's uh, see if you've ever heard this one before. I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. <laughs> right? Y'all heard that one? Yeah. Drives me crazy. And um, you know, my late biological mother was very fond of that that one. And uh, of course, if you say it the way that she did. Uh, you have to say religious the same way that you would say uh, uh, a contagious rash <laughs> and spiritual as if it were the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? Of course, my mother wasn't the only one who had this view, okay? If you go online and you just do a simple Google search for quotes on religion, right, <laughs> you'll get some real gems, right? George Carlin once said, religion is like a pair of shoes. Find one that fits for you, but don't make me wear your shoes. Mahatma Gandhi said, God has no religion. Okay. And uh, how about this one? All religion, my friend, is simply evolved out of fraud, fear, greed, imagination, and poetry. Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, yikes. Is, is religion really that bad? And is it better to be spiritual rather than religious? What's the difference? What is the difference between them? Can you have one without the other? As my late mom and my, my, my late biological mother and so many others imply, okay? So that's the question I wanna look at today. Let's start with a simple definition, right? Merriam-Webster defines religion as a personal set or institutionalized system of religious attitudes, beliefs, and practices. And it goes on to elaborate and give three definitions. A, the service and worship of God or the supernatural. B, commitment or devotion to religious faith or observance. C, a cause, principle, or system of beliefs held to with ardor and faith, okay? But of course, you know, as useful as Merriam-Webster's is, we want to look for a biblical definition, right? So turn to James chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. Okay, and this is in the NIV, just so you know. James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. So we read, if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Now, I don't know about you, brethren, but neither the dictionary definition nor the biblical definition of religion sounds like some horrible, contagious disease to me. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but this sounds like things that I am, and I know you all are, very interested in practicing. So what gives? Why is the, view, the world's view of religion so, so negative? Well, let's go back to the verse in James, and maybe we can see where this disconnect lies. Look again in verse 26. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight ring on their tongue deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Now, the truth is, brethren, that when most people hear the word religion, they're not thinking about the faithful practice of God's laws and ways. They are thinking of all the ways that mankind falls short in that practice, right? 
It is entirely indicative of human nature that we don't look for what's good, do we? Our eye is always drawn to the flaws, the mistakes, what's wrong, right? And in addition to that, people who hear the word religion are also thinking of institutions like, I don't know, the Catholic Church, right? And for them, the institution and the individual are interchangeable. When people bridle at religion, what they're really bridling at is hypocrisy, right? Both in the individual and in the institution. Now, the word religion actually doesn't appear many times in the Bible. It's actually less than a handful. Some translations, it's, it's only five. Some translations, it's as few as three, right? But the Bible does have plenty to say on hypocrisy. Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. It says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. So then let me ask you this, brethren. With, with all the negative connotations of the word religion, is it better to be spiritual? Okay. Well, let's look at the difference. Back to Webster's again. Webster's defines spiritual as of relating to consisting of or affecting the spirit. Okay. So what does spirit mean? Well, I hope we're pretty familiar with the definition of the word, but uh, Webster says an animating or vital principle held to give life to physical organisms, right? Perhaps a better definition, brethren, would be that which endures. Now, we know that this physical body, this physical life, right, around us, it has a shelf life. It has an end date, right? But the spirit that comes from God that animates us, that gives us life, that endures, right? That endures. God endures. And unless we're keeping our minds on that which endures, we can't practice religion with any kind of integrity. So we literally can't have, like I said, we literally cannot have the one without the other, right? Now, I am a recovering addict, and in our fellowship, there's a saying, and you've heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it again. One of the common phrases that we use is that what is spiritual is also practical, right? What that means is, unless I can put it into some kind of regular practice in my life, Anything, unless I can put it into regular practice, it's of no spiritual or enduring benefit to me, right? And, you know, brethren, there's lots of things that can take our eyes off of the prize in this life. There's lots of things that can disrupt those things that we want to do. Like Paul said, those things that I, which I ought to do, I do not. <laughs> but those things that... that I should not do, I do, and I'm paraphrasing there, but, you know, there's lots of things that can take our eyes off of that focus. So the question then is, how can we stay spiritually focused while practicing our faith? Well, for one, we need to stay in God's Word, and I think this pretty much goes without saying. Um... For another, we need to rely, of course, on God's Spirit. God gives us His Spirit for a reason. 
the scripture promises us that when we ask for his spirit and we believe that, that he will give out more of his spirit to us. That is a promise that our God gives us. And, and third, <clears throat> and again, I'm, I hate to go back to recovery here, but there's a reading that we have at our 12-step meetings, and it says, when at the end of the road, we find that we can no longer function as a human being with or without drugs, we all face the same dilemma. What is there left to do, right? The reason I bring this up is this. Brethren, no matter how well I stick to my faith, no matter how well I practice my religion in this life, at the end of the day, the best that I can do, the best that I can be is a human being, right? And it's important to remember that the, be if the best that I can be is a human being. The best that those around us can be is a human being right? So we need to have that compassion. We need to have that compassion with ourselves. We need to have that compassion with others. We need to remember that whether we're talking about spirituality or religion, it's a practice. We don't call it a mastery. We call it a practice because these things are things that we need to continually be working at and continually be practicing in our lives. So in conclusion, if you would, turn to the book of James. I know this is a short message, but James chapter 1, verses 22 through 26. James chapter 1, verses 22 to 26. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Brethren, the practical application of our religion in our everyday lives is where the rubber meets the road, right? And so when people see us, not always because of our flaws, we're imperfect, you know, they, they might question religion as a whole. But again, brethren, it's important to remember that we rely on God's spirit to guide us. And it's the, that thing which endures that we need to focus on. So let's try to practice our religion with some spirituality.